Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina, and tonight it is time to tackle part four of the CB radio antenna series. This is the last part, and I apologize for it taking so long for me to get this out. I have been waiting for a need to build an antenna, and I finally have one. Unfortunately for y'all, it's not actually a CB antenna that I'll be building. I'm building something for a frequency a little different than CB, but the theory, the philosophy is the same. CB antennas, uh, for the most part, I would say 95% of people out there are using a out-of-the-box, something that they purchase online or in a store, and uh, and that works. I mean, I myself use an Antron A99 here in the house, and I use a Antron Max 2000 or SolarCon Max 2000 here at the shop. And for my cars, I've got a, a beautiful uh, Tram 3500 on one of my cars, and... Um, I have a Stryker uh, SR A10, a really nice mag mount antenna. So those are all purchased antennas, you know. Those are antennas you can guy, get, and they're not terribly expensive, I mean, for what they are. But for a lot of folks, part of the hobby, CB radio hobby, more importantly in the ham radio hobby, some of that hobby involves creating, making your own, right? And myself, I make a lot of uh, cool inventions here that I don't really go over on the channel that just work for me or for customers. I, I do auto repair here at the house, but I also do some other stuff here at the house. I'm a big proponent of community radio, and community radio is uh, sometimes referred to as pirate radio, but it's low power radio, a lot of times it's part 15 radio. And, and part 15 radio, it's all about antennas because you want to get the maximum range with what is allowed by law. So that involves making some pretty decent radio antenna equipment. So Anyway, back to the story at hand. Tonight I'll be showing you some pictures of different types of homemade antennas, things that you can make relatively inexpensively. And in order to do so, I have to move well beyond basic CB terminology, basic CB radio or just radio terminology. Uh, and that's pretty much what I preach here on the channel. I'm not an advanced, I don't, I don't get into opening up radios and showing you all how to rebuild them and stuff like that. I've kind of prided myself on being the beginner's guy for CB radio. I like getting people into the hobby. And this video is going to be a lot different than that in the sense that I have to talk about wavelengths and grounds and all this stuff that a lot of times I don't get too terribly in depth with. And that's because I'm not very good at describing some of this stuff to you. So I hope you'll take the words that I give you tonight and I hope you'll go and do your own research to see just how easy or hard it can be to build these on your own. But I want to show you this picture first. This is actually a CB antenna that was sent to me by a fellow YouTuber. This is from Dallas Rife. And this is a pretty cool setup here. I haven't, I've used this at a, at a campground just to play with. And I haven't gonna set this up at the house. I feel like I'm not actually gonna end up using this house. The house, I wanna put this on a camper or an RV or maybe a boat or something like that. But it's just a really neat base antenna. And if you look, let's take a real close look at this. We're not looking at a whole lot of money here. We're not looking at a whole bunch of uh, high-end components. There's an, an inch and a half PCB pipe with two end caps, and we're talking about you know just a few inches of PCB pipe. And attached to that, two eyelets, well, three eyelets, two eyelets of which contain wire. That's just regular copper wire, and those are each a set length, in this case, 102 inches long. And each one of those 102 inch pieces is bound together at that PCB pipe. And inside that, there is a connector that connects to the RG2, uh, two, uh, or PL205, I'm sorry, whatever, connector, the connector, I'm drawing a blank on that, PL, PL, I don't know, whatever, uh, the connector, the PL259, that's it. Whew, one of those days, I guess. I'm already off to a rough start here. The PL259 connector, and that runs down to your radio. And this, my friends, is an 18-foot antenna. This is, this is it. This is a base station antenna. This, you would take, you take the center hook there, and you attach it up in a tree. And you take each of the other two, and you see this kit even came with um, some 550 paracord, and you allow that to tie it off because you want that to be isolated, insulated, and that's what those little isolators, those little porcelain pieces, that, that isolates those so you're not accidentally grounding them to whatever you attach them to. And most of the time an antenna like this, which is called a wire antenna, a long wire antenna, is mounted in an inverted V. Now you can try it horizontally or vertically or any other way you want to, but most of the time you'll see these mounted in an inverted V. So that's it. So that, that's it for that picture. I want to show you that just to give you an idea how simple it is to get a base station antenna for a very low cost of money. 
That equipment there, I would say, costs no more than maybe $15, maybe $20, you know, plus the coax so uh, to, to run it to your, to your, to your uh, radio. So that is a, your most simplistic base station antenna, and I've seen a few different models of base station antennas, but actually this one uh, came from online and was pretty darn cool, pretty, pretty neat setup. Now there are other types. Most of the types that I've seen involve, like if you want to use a mobile antenna, and this is like literally obsolete, but here's a picture of one right here called a fish, a fishing pole antenna, this particular one being seven feet long. But if we take a close look at this picture, all we have here is an antenna that is just a wire that is wound around a seven foot antenna. The idea, of course, is we are working in wavelengths. A quarter wavelength is 108 inches long. And in order to take a seven foot antenna, you have to somehow make the entire, uh, you know, nine foot antenna, and you have to shrink it down to seven feet. You do so by coiling it. And the antenna that I'm gonna show you that I'm starting to build tonight is just that. In fact, the antenna that I'm building is over 400 feet long in wavelength. Think about that, 400 foot long wavelength antenna that it's only going to be about a nine foot antenna. So that's a lot of windings. So that's what I'm going to be doing with that one. But it can be done. There's, there's several ways to do it. The antennas you see that you buy um, online, they have those, those usually they're base loaded, might be center loaded. Very rarely now are they top loaded antennas. But that load, that's the part where they take whatever the length of the antenna that you purchased, they're going to wind that thing up over and over and over again to make up the distance. Now some of them will only make it the quarter wavelength. Other ones think that they get better reception by making it a full half wavelength or a full wavelength, all by just coiling up a very small wire multiple times around the antenna. And some people say that works better, some people say it works worse. The idea here for you as a home builder of an antenna is to understand that it doesn't matter how you get your quarter wavelength out as long as you get a quarter wavelength. We have to have physically a nine foot section of wire in order to get a good SWR. So another style of antenna is instead of winding it around the fish pole like that one there was, we could actually put up an antenna that is a full quarter wavelength or even a half wavelength. One of the easiest ways to do this surprisingly is just by using your coax. Take your coax, and this is a delicate job so you have to be careful. LMR 400 is not inexpensive coax, but it has a solid core center, and so it works really well for base antenna applications. If you take an LMR antenna wire and you were to peel the uh, insulation, the, the, the rubber insulation that's around it, or plastic insulation, take off 109 inches or 108 inches of the insulation. Then you take that external shield, that becomes your ground, right? And you just peel that off. You don't disconnect it, you peel it off. Take a look at this picture here. And you're gonna lay that off at an angle. That becomes your ground plane. Then you're going to remove the inner insulation, the white uh, insulator that's on the inside, just exposing the bare wire that's in the center. That becomes your main antenna. So this is how simple it can be to create an antenna. Oh, better turn that down before somebody comes talking across there. <laughs> got some traffic on GMRS these days, which is nice. There's actually been two people who have moved to the area that use GMRS within the 15 or so miles that mine works with. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so as you can see from this photo here, or this picture, this drawing, it is that simple. You again use an isolator to hang this thing from a tree. You don't want the antenna lead, that main line, that LMR 400 or RG8 or whatever it is you're using. Um, you don't want that to actually touch the tree because it can then ground to the tree or become attached to the tree in a way electronically that the tree becomes part of the circuit. We don't want that. So you're going to use an insulator of some kind and then tie it off to a tree. You're going to have that stripped 108 inch long piece. You're going to have another 108 inch long piece of the uh, copper stranding and you're going to pull that off at an angle to a, act as a ground plane. This will work. This works actually fairly well. I've, I've played with this some when I was younger. So it's that simple to create a ground wave antenna for your house. If you're talking about an inexpensive setup, something you can throw a rope around a tree and pull that thing up there and just get some, you know, some, some signals going. Now you can get a lot more complicated. You can take a 102 steel whip and turn it into a base station by creating some ground planes. If you have a steel roof on your house, maybe you live in a mobile home that has an older steel roof or metal roof, 
or if you live in a uh, work like I do in a building that has a steel roof, you can put an antenna anywhere on this roof and it'll act as a ground plane. So you could use a 102 whip, you could use a regular car antenna, and that would also work for you. So while not necessarily a home built antenna, it's a in it's a different use for a mobile antenna that would work just as well. Now there are companies out there that make uh, you know beam and quad antennas. We're talking about stacked beams where we have multiple antennas to get massive gain and you have to use a rotor to point that. We talked about that in part three, the, the big boys, right? Well, there are guys and gals out there who build their own base antennas that are that complicated. And that involves using usually aluminum uh, conduit, but you can use steel conduit. You just have to be mindful of how much weight you're creating when you create something this large. But I do know of a guy back in Raleigh who built a three element beam. It was a, a horizontal beam that he made out of out of steel pipe. I mean, it was literally like electrical conduit that he used. He cut it down to the right sizes, attached it together, put it on an antenna rotor for a TV set, put it up on his tower, and he was he was rocking and rolling with the world. So that's there. So that's that's it. It's not exactly the most sophisticated video I've ever made. I am going to show you what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to show you some simple math uh, that I use to determine the length of the antenna, and then I'm going to show you how you take the antenna and start winding it around a, um, a non-conductive tube. So if I want to make, and again, in the case that I'm, I'm making a, an antenna that in, in physical length will be over 400 feet, in physical length of the actual antenna size that I'm going to stick out on the roof, it's going to be less than 9 feet. And by doing that, I'm going to have to make an awful lot of windings, but I have to calculate how many windings equals a foot and how many windings equals you know, 100 foot or 200 foot or 300 foot. So if you're interested in getting into the ham bands and you want to make a, a, a antenna that works on a specific band or GMRS or shortwave or whatever it is, this is pretty much going to be the same. I recommend you go online and you do a little research. Certainly there are a lot of ham radio channels out there that probably describe it and show it a lot more accurately than I can. But it is something that I do find as a hobby, and I do build antennas for customers here and there. But this is all on a plane that doesn't exist on YouTube. This is all stuff that happens um, in my personal life. So, Anyway, let's go over to the garage here floor, and I'll show you what it takes and how simple it is to get one of these things started. All right, hopefully you can hear me. But this is right now a 10-foot piece of PCB piping <clears throat> right there. <laughs> And as you can see, it is marked every foot. And there's a good reason for that. So I've marked that every foot. On the end here, I've got an end cap. On this end, it's open. And if you really can see, there's actually X's there because this antenna will not be any longer than nine feet when it's done. But I'm leaving the extra on for right now because, well, I just want to be able to use this for a mounting bracket, really. So, so depending on what frequency you want to make this at, you're going to have to make some calculations. I have my frequency inputted here, and I've come up with a length of 160 feet. So that's the length of the wire antenna, right? But I'm going to be compressing that down into a 9-foot physical length antenna. I needed to figure out how much wire it takes up to wrap it around. And I came up with, thankfully, 6 inches. So two of those to equal a foot of length. So that gave me how many windings around I would need. That gave me 320 windings, right? So I have to wrap this long wire that I purchased here around this thing 320 times in order to equal a electronic, a magnetic, a, 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 a length that the radio transmitter is going to think is 160 feet. Now I'm going to leave excess wire on the front and the rear of this so I can make some minor adjustments. And you can also use an antenna tuner. But the idea behind a home-built antenna is that we're trying to save money. And an antenna tuner is both expensive, and when we're talking about CB radio, it also takes out a lot of the wattage. If we're looking at a 4-watt radio, we want to make sure that every inch, every little fraction of that 4 watts is making it out of the antenna. And an antenna tuner is going to sap that. It's going to take away that energy. So 320 wraps. I did my math there. That comes out to 35 and a half wraps per foot. And again, I've marked this every foot along the way. So that gives me an idea. I can stop. I can double check and count my wraps and make sure that I'm fairly close. Now, when this is done, and I won't be filming this as part of it, there are some differences. So some models, you're going to add a ground plane. For some radios, you're going to add what's called a capacitance hat. 
There's a lot of different things you can do depending on the bands, and I won't get into that in this video because it mostly focuses on CB radio. But I hope you understand, and I'm just going to start with a hot glue gun, and I'm going to start winding it around, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished here. And that's pretty much what a base antenna built at home looks like. A few bucks worth of wire, a few bucks worth of PCV, and about a half a day of sitting around doing some math and, and spending some time getting it done. Let's do it. Well, all right. So, I don't know how much that I'm actually going to show because how boring is it watching a dude wind wires? As you can see, this is pretty crude, pretty ugly looking. That's okay. If you want a professional looking antenna, go buy one or perfect it. But this works. So the next thing I'm going to do with this, and I'm not going to show it in this video because this video is pretty much done, is that I'm going to wrap this thing in a waterproofing agent going to let it cure and then I'm going to make my final adjustments. You can't see it down at the bottom but I have extra wire on both the front and the rear of this. I'm going to use that to trim the overall length to the exact frequency my customer is interested in transmitting on. And that, my friends, is how it works. This is how you build your own antenna. It's really not that difficult but it requires some trial and error. And again, if you're looking for perfection, you probably ought to go with a brand name that's out there because they have worked very hard to make antennas that work very well. Tram, Stryker, K40, I mean these names, Wilson, they've all been around for a long time for good reasons. They make effectively very good radios, and I'm sorry, antennas. So things to think about my friends. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more about homemade antennas, specifically CB antennas, there are several books out there, not in production, but you can find them used on eBay. And uh, they have some designs. In fact, that's where I got the pictures that I shared with you this evening. So check it out. And I'll try to help you if I can. If you have questions, put them in the comments section and I'll do my best to help you out. Until next time, my friends, take care.